So let us continue our discussion. For the sake of simplicity, I have just closed all the files. Now in this video, we will complete our application. So as we all know, this is my main activity. And the main activity contains fragment A, which further contains a recycler view. Well, within our fragment A, if you notice, currently I just have a text view. But down below I have the recycler view which is currently commented. So let us uncomment it and remove the text view which was the dummy one. And also make sure you remove the background color. And now let us come to our fragment B. Which currently looks like this. Go to the text tab and replace the code with this code snippet 6. So we are now done with our layout files. Let us close them. Now since this is my recycler view, so there must be a model class for that. So here I have list of destination. So that is why I have a data class of destination. And then I have an object declaration that will provide me the list of destination objects. Thereafter, this is my fragment A. So let us go to the code of fragment A where I will set up my recycler view. So simply uncomment these codes and then import the required packages. Now this fragment A is present within the main activity. So let us first go to the main activity and let us remove this temporary code and then uncomment these lines of code. Import the required packages now please don't worry about all of these codes, I will explain you shortly. Now once the user click on any list item, he will be navigated to the next fragment. For the handset, it will be the detail activity. Now this is my fragment B. So let us go to fragment B, where we have a function, let us uncomment it. So that we can set the title and also the description. So here I will simply import the Kotlin Synthetix from fragment B. And this title and description text is actually this text view and also this text view respectively. Now this fragment B is present within the detail activity for the handset. So let us go to detail activity and there we have some code. So let us uncomment them as well. Well again, I will explain you these code shortly. Now thereafter the recycler view contains one adapter class attached to it. So here is my recycler adapter, which looks very similar to any other adapter class. Perfect. Quite simple. And now I have one communicator interface. Well, this interface is meant for inter-fragment communication, which I will again talk about it shortly. So if you run the application right now, you will get the desired output in case of handset, as well as in case of tablet, you will see a dual pane layout. Now the question arises, how from the Kotlin file we are able to manage all of these layouts. So let us start with our main activity. Now if you notice, the main activity has the layout of activity main. For the handset, our activity main.xml contains only one fragment, which you can see here, such as fragment A. But for the tablet, in case of landscape orientation, we have two fragments, right? This simply means that for the handset, we don't have any fragment B. In short, if the fragment B is present in the activity main.xml, then we are running our application in the tablet. Else, if it is absent, then we are running in the handset. So here I am simply checking for the visibility of my fragment B. If it is absent, then my is dual pane, which is a boolean value, will be false. If my fragment B is present, then this boolean value will be true. Now using this boolean value, we can customize our code. For example, for the handset, I want to navigate from one activity to another. Fine. So here is the code for that. If this boolean value is false, so in that case, simply execute this portion. Because we are in smartphone. So using the intent, we are navigating to the detail activity. And then passing on title and description, so that it can be displayed in my detail activity here, in these two text view. Perfect. Now what about the tablet? Well in tablet, we have to pass data from one fragment to another. Fine. 
So that is why if we are in tablet, then in the fragment B, simply display the details like this. And this function display detail, it is a method that we have defined within our fragment B here, with the help of which we are finally displaying all the data here, perfect. So in this way, our application is working perfectly fine. Now in the end, as a beginner, you might ask what this my communicator interface is doing here. Well, initially I told you that it is meant for inter-fragment communication. Well, in case of handset, these two fragments are interacting with each other. So the interaction between these two is known as inter-fragment communication. Similarly, in case of tablet as well, these two fragments are communicating with each other by passing some data from this fragment to another fragment. So again, this is inter-fragment communication. Well, the communication between these fragments is not so straightforward. We have to follow some protocol. To understand what is inter-fragment communication, let me show you this slide. Suppose this is my main activity. And currently within my main activity, we have fragment A, which contains suppose a recycler view. Now also within my application, we have detail activity and also fragment B, which is a detail view. Now currently when the user click on any list item present within the fragment A, then we have to somehow pass data to the fragment B, so that the user can see the detail of that list item clicked. So first, let us understand the inter-fragment communication in case of handset. Let us assume this is my case 1. So in the first case, when the user click on the list item within fragment A, then with the help of interface of my communicator, we have to pass data to the main activity. Now once the main activity receives the data, then we have to pass that data to the detail activity. Thereafter, when the detail activity is on the screen, then this detail activity will simply pass the data to the fragment B thus completing the communication between these two fragments. So in short, these two fragments cannot interact directly. That is, the fragment A must communicate with its parent activity, in which it is present. Similarly, the fragment B should always interact with the parent activity in which it is present. So let me show you the details of the code flow for our handset. So for the handset, when the user click on any item, then that click event is actually present within let us close all the files first within my recycler adapter down below here. So here if you notice with the help of interface we are passing title and description of this fragment A to its parent activity that is our main activity. So once we receive the data within my main activity within this function of display details which is a part of our interface of my communicator, then with the help of this boolean value, we can know that we are currently in smartphone. So then we can pass the data with the help of intent to the next activity, that is detail activity. So within the detail activity, we are first retrieving the data, such as description and title. Now once this activity gets the data, then it can simply pass the data to the fragment B which is present within our detail activity. So with the help of this function display details, we are passing data to our fragment B. So within the fragment B, we have this function with the help of which we are displaying data in the UI. So you can see the communication flow from fragment A to its parent main activity, then from main activity to the detail activity and from detail activity to the child fragment B, thus completing the flow of inter fragment communication. Now let us come to our case 2 that is for tablets. Now for tablets if you notice we just have one activity that is the main activity. So the main activity contains both the fragments A and B. So in short for both fragment A and B we have the same parent activity as main activity. So for the tablets we don't have any detail activity. Fine so these two fragments has a common parent of main activity. As we all know, the fragment A cannot interact with fragment B directly. So here, the fragment A will again pass the data with the help of interface to the main activity. And then the main activity, which is again the parent of fragment B, will pass data to the fragment B in case of tablet, thus completing the flow of inter-fragment communication in case of tablet. 
So here we have the flow for the handset and here we have the flow for tablet. Great isn't it? So let me show you in case of tablet how communication is taking place. Well again we have to start with the recycler adapter. Let us first close all the files. So here again when the user click on any item with the help of interface, we are passing data from fragment A which contains the recycler view to our parent main activity. Here fine within this function. Now once the data is received as title and description, then we are checking if we are in tablet or not, which in case of tablet will be true, right? Now the main activity contains fragment B as a child. So here we will pass data to the fragment B with the help of this display details function, which is present here within the fragment B here. Perfect. And then again the data will be displayed to the UI. So in this way we are performing the interfragment communication in case of tablet from fragment A pass data to main activity that is the parent activity and from this activity pass data to the fragment B. Perfect. So I hope now things are clear in your mind. Also with this we have reached the end of this section. So let us summarize our section. Firstly we did the project setup for our section. Then we learned how to design layouts for landscape and portrait orientation and also how to design separate layouts for phones and tablets by using SW, W and H qualifiers. Thereafter we learned how to utilize widescreen tablets by implementing dual pane functionality and along with this we also learned what is interfragment communication. So so far in this course we have covered these two parts of the course. So in the next section we will learn how to use resources for multiple screens. So see you there in the next section. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Thank you.